I'm Bambi Francisco with Vader News. Well, it's a tough time to be in the venture business. There are few to no exits for VC-backed deals, and many investors in VC firms, the limited partners, are struggling to make capital calls. All this is good news for the direct secondary market players like Saints Capital and Ken Sawyer, the founder of Saints Capital. Ken, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. The Dow Jones, Dow Jones Venture Source just put out a report saying the U.S. venture capital industry is suffering through its worst liquidity drought on record. Is this driving VCs to do your type of deal? I think they're becoming more open to doing direct secondary transactions. This has sort of been some, first of all, this market hasn't been around for a long period of time. As a venture capitalist, you typically think of exits in only two ways. You think of, I'm going to take my company public or I'm going to sell it to a strategic buyer. And that's been, it's hard when you only have two forms of exit opportunities in a period of time where the M&A market is hurting given capital issues and the IPO market is certainly barren as well. Mm -hmm. Your options for achieving liquidity are few and far between. As a result, people are saying, hey, much like the buyout market, which has both strategic exits, IPOs, as well as a sale to another private equity firm. In fact, in the heyday of the buyout market, 50%, some people estimated, of the transactions in buyouts were from one buyout firm mm. to another buyout firm. Mm. Part of our argument uh, and rationale that we give to venture capitalists and other people who have invested in alternative assets is this is a great third leg of a stool of an exit environment. Mm -hmm. You too can sell to another investor much like the buyout world has done for years. So what percentage of the exits are you accounting for? So in the venture, we, we give the following type of uh, uh, dynamic. In the public markets, one super smart investor, a hedge fund or a mutual fund, sells to another super smart investor about 98% of the trades on the market. Mm -hmm. There are certainly some acquisitions, public tenders of public companies where a strategic buyer buys another public company, but most yeah. of the trades are from one smart investor to another yeah. smart investor. Yeah. In the buyout world, it is range, but one says, between 25 and 50 percent of the exits is from one super smart private equity investor to another super smart private equity investor. We think in the venture market less than one percent of the exits are from one super smart venture investor to another hopefully super smart venture investor. So we think there's an opportunity. I don't think it's ever going to become 98 percent, probably not even 50 percent, probably not even 25 percent, but we do think it can go from one percent to 10 percent of the exits from venture firms could be done on a secondary basis. Well, that's an opportunity for you. But let's talk about the pricing and the, and the valuations. I think in your note, your letter to investors, you said you were concerned about uh, the pricing, the prices you, you thought that they would continue to decline. Mm -hmm. uh, you are looking at early stage to late stage to across the board, different, different industries, different stages. So when you talk about prices declining, uh, are you seeing prices declining today? Are you continuing to see that? Uh, and do you expect prices to be declining further? And where mm -hmm. will they decline? So, so I think there's no question that the NASDAQ market has fallen substantially. It was down just about 40% in 2008. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The venture market, in terms of pricing, we think of it based on last round valuation. Mm -hmm. So when you think about discounts or valuations falling, you have to think of it in terms of a last round valuation. If the last round of the company was just done in December of 2008, the price that we might pay may not be very materially different, if at all, from that valuation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If the valuation had done when NASDAQ was 60% higher than it is today, it was done say mid-2007, undoubtedly the valuation today, much like the public market valuations of great companies, is lower. And so we do see that, uh, that we've bought at significant discounts to last round valuations. It just happens to be many companies that had last round valuations done in 06, 07 in that what period of time. What were the discounts? We sort of saw an average of our purchases in 2008 about a 60 some odd percent discount, between 60 and 70 percent discount to last round valuations. Now point, again, pointing out that most of those related to valuations done in 2007. Really That's seven, not that materially different than mm -hmm. the price you would have paid for eBay in right. mid-2007 or Microsoft or GE or any of the other companies versus the price you're paying today. So it's the market. 
When you look across the different sectors, though, or even the different stages, where do you see which companies or which sectors have taken the brunt of, of the, the hit, or is it just the same across the board? Well, semiconductors clearly have been hugely uh, hurt in the, the, the downfall, due in part to the high capital requirements that semiconductors have in terms of funding. Uh -huh. And in a period of reduced capital available for companies, those companies that have huge capital requirements, mm -hmm. absent perhaps the clean tech market, where there still seems to be substantial demand for investment there, in those capital intensive industries, they've certainly been hurt more than others. Okay. We happen to focus are investing in 2008 more on med tech than we had historically. Okay. And the rationale for that was we still believe the economic outlook for both the United States and other countries mm -hmm. is highly uncertain. Mm -hmm. And that we think that that downturn, things may not turn around in 2009, they may not turn around in 2010. Mm -hmm. And those companies with, who are going to get valued based on growth and revenues and profitability and so forth in a difficult economic time are mm -hmm. going to be valuation challenged for some time to come. Mm -hmm. Med tech companies which tend to be slightly less capital intensive than biotech companies, their valuation increases are based more on clinical trial results, which are really uncorrelated with the economic yeah. environment. And so we tended to invest on that. We felt better able to control and understand those valuation dynamics in this type of market than in others. So we overweighted. We still did a lot of technology investing. We just overweighted towards medtech in 2008. And you'll continue to do that? We'll continue to do that, yeah. Are you buying early stage or later stage companies? Where, where's the value for you? We've always been a growth equity investor. And so while we have early stage companies and we have buyout assets, late stage companies, for the most part we've been focused on, on growth equity. We remain focused in this environment on growth equity investments. We're focused on companies that don't have high capital needs, often are profitable, with material revenues and growing. And as I would point out, um, the companies like this in the public markets in 2007 traded at 15 to 20 times EBITDA. Mm -hmm. Those valuations in public markets today are often eight times EBITDA. And if we can buy at a discount to those types of valuations, we do see over the next five years valuations going up above eight times EBITDA that many of the high quality, profitable, you know, technology companies trade for on the NASDAQ today. And um, just one last question about just valuing your, you know, the, the dynamics. You were talking about the dynamics of, of, of pricing your, these purchases, whether it's a whole portfolio or an individual company. I'd imagine it's buying a portfolio of companies. Mm -hmm. the, the dynamics are definitely different today versus, you know, during boom times. Um, and, and I guess the question is, how do you, how do you, well, how do you value these, uh, these portfolios? Well, I think, you know, obviously there's a little bit of art and there's a little bit of science. And obviously the science is you look at comparable companies, where the last round traded at, how are they competitively positioned. There's some analysis that you do around it. And then there's a little bit of art that you do around it, how good's the management team, how do you feel about the co-investors and the syndicate of investors that are there, how will people behave. Um, so part of that is both, and you have to look at both of those things and sort of put your both numerical and quantitative analysis along with a qualitative analysis to come to those conclusions. I, I guess is right now you probably have, as you mentioned, a bunch of zeros. You have a lot of companies in a portfolio that are worth zero and you know, you've got very little wheat, lots of chaff. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you value that when when VCs probably don't want to give you some of their gems unless you take a whole boatload of their right. Well, we, we certainly see a lot of folks saying, I've got a bunch of companies I'm not interested in supporting, so why don't you take those? And our answer typically to that is thanks, but no thanks. Or sometimes maybe if you pay me to take them, we would take them. And I say that a bit facetiously, but I think people recognize this. The people realize that as an investor, we need some, we're investing in quality companies. We need some quality companies. We will solve a problem for someone or we'll provide them liquidity across a portfolio of investments. But if all those portfolio investments are really you know, worth zero or all new money needs to go in, a lot of new money needs to go into them, so the old money is relatively worthless, the price that we're willing to pay often is immaterial. So we need some good companies in a portfolio or we're not going to have interest in acquiring a portfolio of you know, uh, uh, companies that are all zeros or uh, <laughs> chaff, as you put it. Okay, Ken, well, we're going to have you back and we're going to talk a little bit more about your businesses, including do you actually put follow-on investments for, for some of those uh, companies that you end up buying? So, Ken, stick around. Great.
I've been speaking with Ken Sawyer. He is the founder of Saints Capital. I'm Bambi Francisco.